Have you ever wondered what it would be like to be a full-time RVer and then to get sick on the road? Well, I'm dealing with that right now and I'll share what I've learned next. Welcome to the channel. I'm Liz and I'm a full-time RVer. I've been on the road four years. I don't normally sound like this. I'm actually dealing with illness and injury. Both happened in about a month's time. So I have lots of tips to share with you on what I've learned. And I want to thank you because my goal is to hit 100,000 subscribers. So thank you for subscribing and getting me a little bit closer each day. I'm recovering from COVID. I don't normally sound like this. I want to talk about the COVID, but first I want to talk about the injury. So I was riding my bike in the desert. I'm in Arizona and the desert is beautiful and I crossed a wash. If you're an East Coast person like me, you probably don't know what a wash is. It's a drainage ditch that's dry and does get wet when it rains. So it's kind of gravelly. And as I go down the first part of the wash and I'm crossing the gravel, I thought, well, I might fall off the bike. So I hopped off and I was fine. And then as I got back on, I fell over. Now I fell into a plant. Now the desert is full of saguaros, which I used to call saguaros, but saguaros are those cactus like this. Also full of prickly pear, things I think that are called chala, and also barrel cactus. I mean, the place is definitely very prickly. Well, I got lucky, I fell on a dead plant and it was some kind of shrub that somebody had cut back and it had like these stalks that were dead. And I landed on that and I swear, it felt like it went between my rib cage and lung. I had this awful pain on my left side. And I know from being injured before, and you probably know too, that you get a little bit of adrenaline rush. And I was three miles from home and I'm like, I just need to get back as soon as I can before the pain really kicks in. So I got back and I laid on the couch and as the hours went by, the pain got worse and worse. And then I Googled and we know how scary it can be to Google. So I Googled and pain on the left side, if you've had an injury, could be an injured spleen. The spleen could be swelling, could rupture, and I could die. Well, I have to say as a solo RVer, I'd never been more scared, never felt more alone at that time where I'm like, oh my gosh, what should I do? Is it an overreaction to call an ambulance? I just didn't know. Well, this brings me to tip number one. I happened to have the phone number of my neighbors right across from me. So I texted them and I said, hey, do you know if there's anybody here in the campground with medical experience? I wanted somebody with a medical background to just kind of advise me. I just, I needed help thinking this thing through. Well, he came back with, he checked with the, with the other neighbor and I should just call 911. You know, it's life is too short. Don't want to make it any shorter than it is. So I did call EMT and an ambulance came out. Now I want to stop right there and share a couple other tips. I travel every two to three weeks. I don't know my address by heart. I write it down on a magnet that I keep on my fridge. This is so important. You could make it a favorites on your phone, but you always want to know your address and also include your site number. Another thing that I think is really important is to know where the ER is, how far from you, and if there's an urgent care nearby. It doesn't really take that much every time you move to a campground to just know your surroundings. Also, I want to say that I had really good peace of mind because I changed my health insurance about a year ago. I went to MediShare. This MediShare plan is only a thousand bucks per incident. So I knew that if I was taken by ambulance to the hospital, let's say I had to have surgery, stay in the hospital, have rehab, drugs, the whole bit, there's only a thousand dollar deductible one time. And it is good to have insurance that covers you nationwide wherever you travel because because some plans don't do that, but my plan does. Now I did a separate video about my health insurance, so you can watch that, or you can just call my agent. I put his number in the comments. Okay, so now the EMT get here. I have to say, I wish I filmed this. I had six hunky men in my rig. I couldn't believe it. They were really nice. They checked me out and they said that my vitals are fine. So I most likely don't have a problem with my spleen. It's not swelling, it's not gonna rupture. They said, but you may just wanna go ahead and go to the hospital and get checked over. They didn't wanna be the final word. 
Then they said, if they took me to the ER, it would be a 12 hour wait. So I said, well, wait, I thought if I was brought in by the EMT or brought in by an ambulance, I get to skip the line and go first. He said, it used to be that way, but since COVID, no, you have to wait with everyone else. <laughs> well, I couldn't imagine waiting 12 hours. And honestly, you know, he said, with the vitals being fine, you most likely have a broken rib or bruised ribs or maybe more than one broken rib. And there's no treatment for that. So I felt like there was no reason to go. I just needed to stay home home and rest up. Now a couple weeks later, I got a sore throat, started feeling bad, and then I got a text from an RV repairman that had been there a couple days before, and he had just tested positive for COVID. So I think it's very important to have a fully stocked medicine cabinet, a big first aid kit when you're an RVer. I have far more with me now than I did when I lived in a house. And the reason is, is that the drugstore may not be just down the road where it was with a house. It may be a 40 minute drive. You do a lot more diagnosis when you're an RVer, particularly when you're traveling solo. So I have a thermometer in there and just a whole bunch of other stuff. So I could see I had a fever, but I did not have a COVID test. From now on, I'm gonna keep a COVID test with me. I've never had COVID before. Fortunately, I had another neighbor who heard I was sick and she said, hey, I've got some extra COVID tests, go ahead and take them. Now, if you've never taken a COVID test, you don't wanna learn when you have a fever. Hey, I feel like crap. I've been in bed for probably 48 hours. I started getting like an itchy throat and then I noticed that I had a fever. So, <coughs> and, a, and a cough. I had a pretty good fever going on. I was now on day two of being sick and I really struggled figuring it out. Just look at this. It's so complicated and I've got all these instructions and I'm like, oh my God. It's not hard to take a COVID test, but I highly recommend when you don't have a fever, if you've never taken one before, go ahead and pre-read those instructions so you know what to do. So mine came up positive. Another thing that I'm really grateful for in my first aid kit is I have an oximeter. If you remember when COVID first came out, people were having problems with their oxygen levels going too low. So the oximeter, I was able to monitor that I was okay on breathing. Once again, my neighbors stepped up and were so helpful. I had several neighbors offer to go to the store and bring me food. I had a neighbor bring me some cough syrup. You know, this is what camping is all about. Everywhere I go, all the campgrounds I go, they're just such friendly places and it's a great community. Now I travel all the time. I've been traveling for four years. I have decided that from now on when I move campsites, I'm gonna make it a point to meet my neighbors and get a phone number. You just never know what's gonna happen. Let's say I hear a noise or something outside, I can text them. It's just a good thing for safety as well as for health and well-being. When I check into a campground, I am going to ask if there's a Facebook group. This is a wonderful way to stay connected with what's going on in the campground and to also put an alert out such as, hey, I have COVID. Now I did take a COVID test again a week later and I'm happy to report that I'm negative. I'm not fully recovered. I'm getting a little bit better each day. I do have the cough and the sore throat and I have a little bit of COVID brain. So if you've enjoyed this video, please subscribe and let me know of any tips that I may have missed due to that COVID. COVID brain. Thanks for watching. And as always, these are exciting times to push past fear, build confidence and live amazing.